international short stories volume two english stories this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit LibriVox.org. recording by lynn thompson international short stories volume two english stories edited by william patton section sixteen the courting of dinah shad by rudyard kipling part two did i ever tell you how dinah shad came to be wife of mine i dissembled a burning anxiety that i had felt for some months ever since dinah shad the strong the patient and the infinitely tender had of her own good love and free will washed a shirt for me moving in a barren land where washing was not I can't remember I said casually was it before or after you made love to Annie Bragin and got no satisfaction The story of Annie Bragin is written in another place It is one of the many episodes in Mulvaney's checkered career Before before long before was that business of Annie Bragin and the corporal's ghost Never woman was the worst for me when I had married Dinah there's a time for all things and I know how to keep all things in place barring the drink that keeps me in my place with no hope of coming to be aught else Begin at the beginning I insisted mrs. Mulvaney told me that you married her when you were quartered in crab bokhar barracks and The same is a cesspit said Mulvaney piously she spoke through did Dinah Twas this way talking of that have you ever fallen in love so? I preserved the silence of the damned Mulvaney continued then I will assume that ye have not I did in the days of my youth as I have more than once told you I was a man that filled the eye and delighted the soul of women Never man was hated as I have been never man was loved as I no not within half a day's march of it For the first five years of my service when I was what I would give my soul to be now I took whatever was within my reach and digested it and that's more than most men can say Drink I took and it did me no harm by the hollow of heaven I could play with four women at once and keep them from finding out anything about the other three and Smile like a full bone marigold through it all dick Colhan of the battery will have down on us tonight Could drive his team no better than I mine and I held the worse of cattle and so I lived and so I was happy till after that business with Annie Bragin She that turned me off as cool as a meat safe and taught me where I stood in the mind of an honest woman Twas no sweet dose to take After that I sickened a while and took thought of my regimental work Conceiting myself I would study and be a sergeant and a major general 20 minutes after that But on top of my ambitiousness there was an empty place in my soul and my own opinion of myself could not fill it says I to myself Terence you're a great man and the best set up in the regiment go on and get promotion Says myself to me what for says I to myself for the glory of it says myself to me Will that fill these two strong arms of yours Terence go to the devil says I to myself go to the married line says myself to me Tis the same thing says I to myself if you're the same man it is said myself to me and with that I considered on it a long while Did you ever feel that way sir? I snored gently knowing that if Mulvaney were uninterrupted he would go on The clamor from the bivouac fires beat up to the stars as the rival singers of the companies were pitted against each other So I felt that way and a bad time it was once being a fool I went into the married lines more for the sake of speaking to our old colored sergeant shad than for any thruck with women folk I was a corporal then reduced afterwards, but a corporal then I've got a photograph of myself to prove it You'll take a cup of tea with us says he I will that I says though tea is not my diversion Twill be better for you if it were says old mother shad and she ought to know for shad in the end of his service drank bung full each night with that I took off my gloves there was pipe clay in them so that they stood alone 
and pulled up my chair looking round at the china ornaments and bits of things in the shad's quarters there were things that belonged to a woman and no camp kit here today and dissipated next you're comfortable in this place sergeant says i tis the wife that did it boy says he pointing the stem of his pipe to old mother shad and she smacked the top of his bald head upon the compliment that means you want money says she and then and then when the kettle was to be filled dinah came in my dinah her sleeves rolled up to the elbow and her hair in a golden glory over her forehead the big blue eyes beneath twinkling like stars on a frosty night and the tread of her two feet lighter than waste paper from the colonel's basket in orderly room when it's emptied being but a slip of a girl she went pink at seeing me and i twisted me moustache and looked at a picture for an inst the wall never show a woman that you care the snap of a finger for her and be gad she'll come bleating to your boot heels i suppose that's why you followed annie bragan till everybody in the married quarters laughed at you said i remembering that unhallowed wooing and casting off the disguise of drowsiness i'm laying down the general theory of the attack said mulvaney driving his foot into the dying fire if you read the soldier's pocket-book which never any soldier reads you'll see that there are exceptions when dinah was out of the door and twas as though the sunlight had gone too mother of heaven sergeant says i but is that your daughter i've believed that way these eighteen years says old shad his eyes twinkling but mrs shad has her own opinion like every other woman tis with yours this time for a miracle says mother shad then why in the name of fortune did i never see her before says i because you've been traipsing round with the married women these three years past she was a bit of a child till last year and she shot up with the spring says old mother shad i'll traipse no more says i do you mean that says old mother shad looking at me sideways like a hen looks at a hawk when the chickens are running free try me and tell says i with that i pulled on my gloves drank off the tea and went out of the house as stiff as a general prayed for well i knew that dinah shad's eyes were in the small of my back out of the scullery window faith that was the only time i mourned i was not a cavalryman for the sake of the spurs to jingle i went out to think and i did a powerful lot of thinking but it all came round to that slip of a girl in the dotted blue dress with the blue eyes and the sparkle in them then i kept off canteen and i kept to the married quarters or near by on the chance of meeting dinah did i meet her oh my time passed did i not with a lump in my throat as big as my valise and my heart going like a farrier's gorge on a saturday morning twas good day to you miss dinah and good day to you corporal for a week or two and divil a bit further i could get because of the respect i have for that girl that i could have broken between finger and thumb here i giggled as i recalled the gigantic figure of dinah shad when she handed me my shirt you may laugh grunted mulvaney but i'm speaking the truth and tis you that are in fault dinah was a girl that would have taken the imperiousness out of the duchess of clonmel in those days flower hand foot of shod air and the eyes of the morning she had that is my wife to-day old dinah and never aught else than dinah shad to me twas after three weeks standing off and on and never making headway except through the eyes that a little drummer boy grinned in me face when i had admonished him with the buckle of my belt for rioting all over the place and i'm not the only one that doesn't cape to barracks says he i took him off by the scruff of his neck my heart was hung on a trigger those days you'll understand and out with it says i or i'll leave no bone in your umbruck speak to dempsey says he howling dempsey which says i ye unwashed limb of satan of the bobtail's dragoon said he he's seen her home from her aunt's house in the civil lines four times this fortnight child says i dropping him your tongue's stronger than your body go to your quarters i'm sorry i dressed you down at that i went four ways to once hunting dempsey i was mad to think that with all my airs among women i should have been cheated by a basin-faced fall of a cavalryman not fit to trust on a mule trunk presently i found him in our lines the bobtails was quartered next us 
and a tallowy, top-heavy son of a she-mule he was, with his big brass spurs and his plastrons on his epigastons and all, but he never flinched a hair. A word with you, Dempsey, says I. You've walked with Dinah Shad four times this fortnight gone. What's that to you, says he? I'll walk forty times more, and forty times on top of that, ye shovel-footed, clod-breaking infantry lance corporal. Before I could guard, he had his gloved fist home on me cheek, and down I went, full sprawl. Will that content you, says he, blowing on his knuckles for all the world like a Scots grey officer? Content, says I, for your own sake, man, take off your spurs, peel your jacket and on glove. "'Tis the beginning of the overture. Stand up. He stood all he knew, but he never peeled his jacket, and his shoulders had no fair play. I was fighting for Dinah Shad, and that cut on me cheek. What hope had he for us, me? Stand up, says I, time and again, and he was beginning to quarter the ground and guard high on go large. This isn't riding school, says I. Oh, man, stand up, and let me get at ye. But when I saw he would be running about, I grip his stock in me left and his waist belt in me right, and swung him clear to me right front, head under, he hammering me nose till the wind was knocked out of him on the bare ground. Stand up, says I, or I'll kick your head into your chest. And I would have done it too, so raging mad I was. Me collar bones broke, says he. Help me back to lines. I'll walk with her no more. So I helped him back. And was his collarbone broken, I asked, for I fancy that only Leroyd would neatly accomplish that terrible throw. He pitched on his left shoulder point. It was. Next day the news was in both barracks, and when I met Dinah Shad with a cheek like the regimental tailor's samples, there was no good morning corporal or all else. And what have I done, Miss Shad? says I, very bold, planting myself for her, that ye should not pass the time of day. You've half killed Rough Rider Dempsey, says she, her dear blue eyes filling up. Maybe, says I, was he a friend of yours that saw ye home four times in a fortnight? Yes, said she, very bold, but her mouth was down at the corners. And, and what's that to you? Ask Dempsey, says I, pretending to go away. Did you fight for me then, you silly man, she says, though she knew it all along. Who else, says I? and I took one pace to the front. I wasn't worth it, says she, fingering her apron. That's for me to say, says I. Shall I say it? Yes, says she, in a saint's whisper, and at that I explained myself, and she told me what every man that is a man, and many that is a woman, hears once in his life. But what made you cry at starting, Dinah, darling, says I. Your, your bloody cheek, says she, ducking her little head down on my sash. I was duty for the day, and whimpering like a sorrowful angel. Now a man could take that two ways. I took it as pleased me best, and my first kiss with it. Mother of innocence, but I kissed her on the tip of her nose and under the eye, and a girl that lets a kiss come tumbleways like that has never been kissed before. Take note of that, sir. Then we went hand in hand to old mother Shad, like two little children, and she said it was no bad thing. An old Shad nodded behind his pipe, and Dinah ran away to her own room. That day I trod on rolling clouds. All earth was too small to hold me. Begad, I could have picked the sun out of the sky for a live coal to me pipe, so magnificent I was. But I took recruities at squad drill, and began with the general battalion advance when I should have been balanced stepping them. Aye, that day, that day. A very long pause. Well, said I, it was all wrong, said Mulvaney with an enormous sigh, and sure I know that every bit of it was me own foolishness. That night I took maybe the half of three pints, not enough to turn the hair of a man in his natural sinses. But I was more than half drunk with pure joy, and that canteen beer was so much whiskey to me. I can't tell how it came about. But because I had no thought for anyone except Dinah, because I hadn't slipped her little white arms from me neck five minutes, because the breath of her kiss was not gone from me mouth, I must go through the married lines on me way to quarters, and I must stay talking to a red-headed Mullinger heifer of a girl, Judy Sheehy, 
that was daughter to mother Sheehy, the wife of Nick Sheehy, the canteen sergeant. The black curse of Shiley be on the whole brood that are above ground this day. And what are you holding your head that high for, Corporal? says Judy. Come in and try the cup of tea, she says, standing in the doorway. Being an unbustable fool and thinking of anything but tea, I went. Mother's at canteen, says Judy, smoothing the hair of hers that was like red snakes and looking at me cornerways out of her green cat's eyes. You'll not mind, Corporal. I can endure, says I. Old Mother Sheehy be in no diversion of mine, nor her daughter, too. Judy fetched the tea things and put them on the table, leaning over me very close to get them square. I drew back, thinking of Dinah. Is it afraid you are of a girl alone? says Judy. No, says I. Why should I be? That rests with the girl, says Judy, drawing her chair next to mine. Then there let it rest, says I, and thinking I'd been a trifle unpolite, I says, The tea's not quite sweet enough for me taste. Put your little finger in the cup, Judy. Twill make it nectar. What's nectar? says she. Something very sweet, says I. And for the sinful life of me I could not help looking at her out of the corner of me eye, as I was used to look at a woman. Go on with you, corporal, says she. You're a flirt. On me soul I'm not, says I. Then you're a cruel, handsome man, and that's worse, says she, heaving big sighs and looking crossways. You know your own mind, says I. Twill be better for me if I did not, she says. There's a dale to be said on both sides of that, says I, not thinking. Say your own part of it then, Terence, darling, says she, for begad, I'm thinking I've said too much or too little for an honest girl, and with that she puts her arm round me neck and kiss me. There's no more to be said after that, says I, kissing her back again. Oh, the main scut that I was, my head ringing with Dinah Shad. How does it come about, sir, that when a man has put the cometh on one woman, he's sure bound to put it on another? Tis the same thing at musketry. One day every shot goes wide or into the bank, and the next day, lay high, lay low, sight or snap, you can't get off the bullseye for ten shots running. That only happens to a man who has a good deal of experience. He does it without thinking, I replied. Thanking you for the compliment, sir, it may be so, but I'm doubting whether you meant it for a compliment. Here now, I sat there with Judy on my knee, telling me all manner of nonsense, and only saying yes and no, when I'd much better have kept tongue between teeth. And that was not an hour after I had left Dinah. What I was thinking of I cannot say. Presently, quiet as a cat, old mother Sheehy came in velvet drunk. She had a daughter's red hair, but twas bold in patches, and I could see in her wicked old face, clear as lightning, what Judy would be twenty years to come. I was for jumping up, but Judy never moved. Terence has promised, mother, says she, and the cold sweat broke out all over me. Old mother Sheehy sat down of a heap and began playing with the cups. Then you're a well-matched pair, she says, very thick, for he's the biggest rogue that ever spoiled the queen's shoe leather, and I'm off, Judy, says I. You should not talk nonsense to your mother. Get her to bed, girl. Nonsense, says the old woman, pricking up her ears like a cat and gripping the table edge. Twill be the most nonsensical nonsense for you, you grinning badger, if nonsense tis. Get clear, you. I'm going to bed. I ran out into the dark, my head in a stew and my heart sick, but I had sense enough to see that I'd brought it all on myself, and this to pass the time of day to a panjandrum of kelcats, says I. What I've said and what I've not said do not matter. Judy and her dam would hold me for a promised man, and Dinah will give me the go, and I deserve it. I will go and get drunk, says I, and forget about it. For tis plain I'm not a marrying man. On my way to canteen I ran against Lascelles, colour sergeant that was of E Company, a hard, hard man with a torment of a wife. You've the head of a drowned man on your shoulders, says he, and you're going where you'll get a worse one. Come back, says he. Let me go, says I. I've thrown me luck over the wall with me own hand. Then that's not the way to get it back, says he. Have out with your trouble, you fool boy. 
and I told him how the matter was. He sucked his lower lip. You've been trapped, says he. Jew Sheedy would be the better for a man's name to hers as soon as she can. And you thought you'd put the come hither on her. That's the natural vanity of the beast. Terence, you're a big born fool, but you're not bad enough to marry into that company. If you said anything, and for all your protestations, I'm sure you did, or did not, which is worse, eat at all. Lie like the father of all lies, but come out of it free of Judy. Do I not know what it is to marry a woman that was the very spit of Judy when she was young? I'm getting old, and I've learnt patience, but you, Terence, you'd raise hand on Judy and kill her in a year. Never mind if Dinah gives you the go. You deserved it. Never mind if the whole regiment laughs at you all day. Get shut of Judy and her mother. They can't drag you to church, but if they do, they'll drag you to hell. Go back to your quarters and lie down, says he. Then, over his shoulder, you must have done with them. Next day, I went to see Dinah, but there was no tucker in me as I walked. I knew the trouble would come soon enough without any handling of mine, and I dreaded it sore. I heard Judy calling me, but I held straight on to the Shad's quarters, and Dinah would have kissed me, but I held her back. When all's said, darling, says I, you can give it me if you will, though I misdoubt twill be so easy to come by then. I had scarce begun to put the explanation into shape before Judy and her mother came to the door. I think there was a veranda, but I'm forgetting. Will you not step in, says Dinah, pretty and polite, though the Shads had no dealings with the Sheehys. Old Mother Shad looked up quick, and she was the first to see the trouble, for Dinah was her daughter. I'm pressed for time today, says Judy, as bold as brass, and I've only come for Terence, my promised man. Tis strange to find him here the day after the day. Dinah looked at me as though I had hit her, and I answered straight. There was some nonsense last night at the Sheehy's quarters, and Judy's carrying on the joke, darling, says I. At the Sheehy's quarters, says Dinah, very slow, and Judy cut in with, He was there from nine till ten, Dinah Shad, and the better half of that time I was sitting on his knee, Dinah Shad. You may look, and you may look, and you may look me up and down, but you won't took away that Terence is my promised man. Terence, darling, tis time for us to be coming home. Dinah Shad never said a word to Judy. You left me at half past eight, says she to me, and I never thought that she'd leave me for Judy, promises or no promises. Go back with her, you that have to be fetched by a girl. I'm done with you, says she, and she ran into her own room, her mother following. So I was alone with those two women, and at liberty to spake my sentiments. Judy Sheehy, says I, if you made a fall of me between the lights, you shall not do it in the day. I never promised you words or lines. You lie, says old mother Sheehy, and may it choke you where you stand. She was far gone in drink. And though it choked me where I stood, I'd not change, says I. Go home, Judy. I take shame for a decent girl like you dragging your mother out bareheaded on this errand. Here now, and have it for an answer. I gave me word to Dinah Shad yesterday, and more blame to me I was with you last night talking nonsense, but nothing more. You've chosen to try to hold me on it. I will not be held thereby for anything in the world. Is that enough? Judy went pink all over, and I wish you joy of the perjury, says she. You've lost a woman that would have worn her hand to the bone for your pleasure. Indeed, Terence, you were not trapped. Lascelles must have spoken plain to her. I am as such as Dinah is, deed I am. You've lost a fool of a girl that'll never look at you again, and you've lost what you never had, your common honesty. If you manage your men as you manage your love making, small wonder they call you the worst corporal in the company. Come away, mother, says she. But devil a foot would the old woman budge. Do you hold by that, says she, peering up under her thick grey eyebrows? Ay, I would, said I. Though Dinah gave me the go twenty times, I'll have no thruck with you or yours, says I. Take your child away, ye shameless woman. And am I shameless, says she, bringing her hands up above her head? Then what are you, ye lying, shaming, weak-kneed, dirty-souled son of a sutler? Am I shameless? 
who put the open shame on me and my child that we should go begging through the lines in daylight for the broken word of a man double portion of my shame be on you terence mulvaney that think yourself so strong by mary and the saints by blood and water and by every sorrow that came into the world since the beginning the black blight fall on you and yours so that you may never be free from pain for another when it's not your own may your heart bleed in your breast drop by drop with all your friends laughing at the bleeding strong you think yourself may your strength be a curse to you to drive you into the devil's hand against your own will clear-eyed you are may your eyes see clear every step of the dark path you take till the hot cinders of hell put them out may the raging dry thirst in my own old bones go to you that you shall never pass bottle full nor glass empty god preserve the light of your understanding to you my jewel of a boy that ye may never forget what ye meant to be and do when you're wallowing in the muck may ye see the better and follow the worse as long as there's breath in your body and may ye die quick in a strange land watching your death before it takes you and unable to stir hand or foot i heard a scuffling in the room behind and then dinah shad's hand dropped into mine like a rose leaf into a muddy road the half of that i'll take says she and more too if i can go home you silly talking woman go home and confess come away come away says judy pulling her mother by the shawl twas none of terence's fault for the love of mary stop the talking and you said old mother sheehy spinning round faunce dinah will you take the half of that man's load stand off from him dinah shad before he takes you down too you that look to be the quartermaster sergeant's wife in five years ye look too high child you shall wash for the quartermaster sergeant when he pleases to give you the job out of charity but a private's wife ye shall be to the end and every sorrow of a private's wife ye shall know and never a joy but one that shall go from you like the tide from a rock the pain of bearing ye shall know but never the pleasure of giving the breast and ye shall put away a man-child into the common ground with never a priest to say a prayer over him and on that man-child ye shall think every day of your life think long dinah shad for you'll never have another though you pray till your knees are bleeding the mothers of children shall mock you behind your back when you're ringing over the wash-tub you shall know what it is to take a drunken husband home and see him go to the guard-room will that please you dinah shad that won't be seen talking to my daughter you shall talk to worse than judy before all's over the sergeant's wife shall look down on you contemptuous daughter of a sergeant and you shall cover it all up with a smiling face when your heart's bursting stand off him dinah shad for i've put the black curse of shaley on him and his own mouth shall make it good she pitched forward on her head and began foaming at the mouth dinah shad ran out with water and judy dragged the old woman into the veranda till she sat up i'm old and forlorn she says trembling and crying and tis like i say a dale more than i mean when you're able to walk go says old mother shad this house has no place for the likes of you that have cursed my daughter ay said the old woman hard words break no bones and dinah shad'll keep the love of her husband till my bones are green corn judy darling i misremember what i came here for can you lend us the bottom of a teacup of tay mrs shad but judy dragged her off crying as though her heart would break and dinah shad and i in ten minutes we have forgot it all then why do you remember it now said i is it like i'd forget every word that wicked old woman spoke fell true in my life afterward and i could have stood it all stood it all except when little shad was born that was on the line of march three months after the regiment was taken with cholera we were between umbala and kalka then and i was on picket when i came off the women showed me the child and it turned on its side and died as i looked we buried him by the road and father victory was a day's march behind with the heavy baggage so the company captain read prayer and since then i've been a childless man and all else that old mother sheehy put upon me and dinah shad what do you think sir 
I thought a good deal, but it seemed better then to reach out for Mulvaney's hand. This demonstration nearly cost me the use of three fingers. Whatever he knows of his weaknesses, Mulvaney is entirely ignorant of his strength. But what do you think, he insisted, as I was straightening out the crushed members. My reply was drowned in yells and outcries from the next fire, where ten men were shouting for Orthris, Private Orthris, Mr. Orthris, Dear boy, Captain Orthris, Field Marshal Orthris, Stanley, you paneth of pop, come here to your own company. And the Cockney, who had been delighting another audience with recondite and Rabelaisian yarns, was shot down among his admirers by the major force. You've crumpled my dress shirt, horrid, said he, and I shan't sing no more to this ere blooming drawing room. Leroyd, roused by the confusion, uncoiled himself, crept behind Orthorus, and raised him aloft on his shoulders. Sing, ye blooming hummingbird, said he, and Orthorus, beating time on Leroy's skull, delivered himself in the raucous voice of the Radcliffe Highway of the following chaste and touching ditty. My girl, she give me the go on sit when I was a London lad. And I went on the drunk for a fortnight, and then I went to the bad. The queen she gave me a shilling to fight for her over the seas, but government built me a fever trap, and India gave me disease. Chorus, ho! Don't you read what a girl says, and don't you go for the beer? And I was an ass when I was at grass, and that's why I am mere. I fired a shot at an Afghan. The beggar he fired again. And I lay on my bed with a hole in my head and missed the next campaign. I up with my gun at a Burman who carried a blooming da. But the cartridge struck and the bayonet bruck, and all I got was the scar. Chorus Ho, don't you aim at an Afghan when you stand on the skyline clear, and don't you go for a Burman if none of your friends is near. I served my time for a corporal. And wetted my stripes with pop for I went to the bend with an intimate friend and finished the night in the shop I served my time for a sergeant the colonel he says no the most you'll be is a full CB and very next night was so Chorus ho don't you go for a corporal unless your head is clear But I was an ass when I was at grass and that is why I'm here I've tasted the luck of the army in barrack and camp and clink and i lost my tip through a blooming trip along of the women and drink i'm down at the heel of my service and when i'm laid on the shelf my very worst friend from beginning to end by the blood of a mouse was myself chorus ho don't you read what a girl says and don't you go for the beer but i was an ass when i was at grass and that is why i'm here Ay, listen to our little man now, singing and shouting as though trouble had never touched him. Do you remember when he went mad with the homesickness, said Mulvaney, recalling a never-to-be-forgotten season when Orthorus waded through the deep waters of affliction and behaved abominably. But he's talking the bitter truth, though, ay, ay. My very worst friend from beginning to end, by the blood of a mouse, was myself. Hark out, he continued, jumping to his feet, what did I tell you, sir? Pft, spft, pft, pft, went the rifles of the picket in the darkness, and we heard their feet rushing toward us as Orthrus tumbled past me and into his greatcoat. It is an impressive thing, even in peace, to see an armed camp spring to life with clatter of accoutrements, click of martini levers, and blood curdling speculations as to the fate of missing boots. Pickets driven in said mulvaney staring like a buck at bay into the soft slinging gloom stand by and keep close to us if tis cavalry they may blunder into the fires tra tra la sung the thrice blessed bugle and the rush to form square began there is much rest and peace in the heart of a square if you arrive in time and are not trodden upon too frequently the smell of leather belts fatigue uniform and unpacked humanity is comforting a dull grumble that seemed to come from every point of the compass at once struck our listening ears and little thrills of excitement ran down the faces of the square those who write so learnedly about judging distance by sound should hear cavalry on the move at night 
a high-pitched yell on the left told us that the disturbers were friends the cavalry of the attack who had missed their direction in the darkness and were feeling blindly for some sort of support and camping ground the difficulty explained they jingled on double pickets out there by your arms lie down and sleep and rest said the major and the square melted away as the men scrambled for their places by the fires when i woke i saw mulvaney the night dew gemming his moustache leaning on his rifle at picket lonely as prometheus on his rock with i know not what vultures tearing his liver End of section 16